some reason. Here we go. There we go. So first, I just want to thank you for taking time out of your day to talk with me. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Heather, and I run a blog called Pink Ninja Blog. We are a lifestyle blog. I am from Ohio, but I live in Indiana now. Um, I'm really excited to talk with you today based on so much that's going on in uh, the United States economy and a lot of the struggles that people are going through today. So again, then just thank you for your time. Um, my first question is, are you able to give me a little bit of background about you and how you really got started in, in the world of finance and you decided to focus on creating content around money-related issues? Um, so a little bit about me. My name is Andini. I'm from Canada and I actually come more from the STEM and like science world. Uh, I grew up making a lot of science fair inventions and projects like a flashlight that runs off the heat of your hand and many other things. Um, and that kind of took off when I was 15 and won at the Google Science Fair. Uh, and then I started doing a lot of public speaking about my life as an inventor and how we need to combine science and art more in the educational system and in our personal and professional lives. Um, I went to university for a degree in English literature and film studies, and I had always had these interests in the arts as well um, and film, but was kind of drifting off in the sciences as well and trying to find ways to do both. Um, so that's a little bit about me. The financial show that I host called Your World on Money with Million Stories actually came about um, kind of by chance. And I feel really lucky that I got to learn so much about uh, finances because I was definitely at a point when I was approached to do the show where I just did not know anything and I was handling my money very irresponsibly. And I think it's something that we all kind of struggle with living in a society that is pushing consumerism at each other every day to an incredible extent that I don't think any human has ever had to deal with in all the many centuries. Um, so yeah, I started hosting the first season of Your World of Money. We have a season two coming soon as well. Um, and it's been just fascinating getting to talk to so many experts about different topics when it comes to finances uh, and also reflecting on my past experiences and actions and going, how can I be more proactive and more responsible going forward? And hopefully sure. the audience is kind of asking the same questions to themselves as they're watching the show. And, and that's kind of where I wanted to lead into is your world on money does cover a variety of financial topics. So how do you decide the theme of your upcoming episodes? Like how is is there an order? How, how do you make that decision of what's most important next? Um, well, the content is definitely catered towards Gen Zers and millennials, um, or even a younger audience, depending who tunes in. So we really try to think about, uh, especially I'm a Gen Zer, so people my age, what are we most struggling with and trying to understand the basics of still? <clears throat> because I think it's unfortunate that still in the educational system, in a lot of places, basic financial education is not really being taught. Um, and I think back to my time when I was, you know, doing calculus and all these kind of things and trigonometry in school. And I was like, why was I not learning about how to do my taxes? Like, right. I so wish there had been a teacher that had stepped up and gone, wait a minute, let's like teach things that our students are really going to use after school is done. Um, so I think... I would say that's a main point when we're choosing the topics for the episodes is like, what do Gen Zers and millennials still struggle with or need help understanding, understanding the basics of? Um, so, you know, credit, um, owning a house or renting, um, retirement is a big one that I think a lot of people my age don't really think about. And I didn't necessarily think about it at all until we filmed the series. And then I went, oh yeah, maybe I should set up a retirement you know, account and deposit a little bit every month, do something because a lot of these things kind of creep up on you before you even realize. Right. I have a teenager and um, she's, she's going through like the geometry and things. And she's mm -hmm. like, why do I need this? And I'm over here going, you really don't because of what you want to do when you grow up. Um, but we're going to cover the other things, like creating a budget. We're going to do those things at home. Oh, so that's I, really I get that. that. I get that. Yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, struggles, when you struggle through things and go, why didn't I learn this? Like you just said, you kind of change your perspective when you have kids. Totally. Um, so what do you do to make sure that you stay informed about the latest trends and pardon me, changes to the financial market and what's going on in the world? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm like recovering from something. No worries. Um, I wish I could say I was on TikTok and watching a lot of the news there, but I'm not. I, I try. I do not have the app. I'm trying very hard to like 
responsibly use my time. Um, I think reading the news, talking to a lot of my friends who are entrepreneurs and in that kind of world uh, can be a bit terrifying, but also very informative when I do speak to them. Um, and honestly, doing the show has been such a wonderful way to just learn more about finance and what's going on. And talking to these experts that we feature on the show and interview really helps me be more aware about what's coming up in the future, both for everyone in the world and also me personally and people like me. Um, and, you know, I talk to my accountant, I have good one on ones with him, and he's very sweet and very helpful and helps me when I'm like, I don't understand what's mm -hmm. going on. And then he's Yeah, he's lovely. So um, are you able to share a memorable, pardon me, a memorable moment from taping doing one of your episodes, something that left a major impact on you or something that you felt would leave a major impact on your viewers? Oh my goodness. Um, something that left a major impact on me was actually when we did the man on the street interviews, uh, just because I was shocked how many other people that I talked to that were around my age, or maybe one or two years younger did not know about financial literacy or what was a credit score was a simple question we asked not many people could answer it, or were they saving for retirement or did they even think about it did they think about ever owning a property or a home at some point? point. Um, I just felt way less alone when I was talking to so many young people and going, okay, most of us don't know what we're doing. So this show, Your World of Money, needs to exist because of this. Um, so I think that was just the most impactful interacting with other people, whether it was the experts or the man on the street interviews and going, oh my gosh, like this is a really important topic that we all need to talk about. So you are talking about really complex issues when it comes to finances. So what challenges do you specifically face when you're trying to take these concepts and deliver them to a broad audience that in a manner that they'll understand? Um, I think we have a really great writer's room as well who collaborate uh, and kind of ask my opinion on the scripts as well, but they're definitely the ones who are writing majority of it. Um, and we're able to take these kind of big intimidating topics like taxes or stocks and break them down into something that visually and also with what I'm saying or narrating makes a lot of sense to the average viewer. Um, so we really try to break it down to the basics. And honestly, I really needed that because uh, when I started the show, I didn't know how to explain most of these concepts. Right. Um, and I think if you don't understand something well, you can't communicate it. So we really tried and the, direct, uh, the director and the writer all did a really wonderful job of communicating very simply these complex topics and then building upon that. Um, but yeah, it's definitely can be intimidating. I think that's a lot of reasons why people, young people don't have a lot of financial literacy is a lot of the material out there is these kind of big words and big numbers and terms, and it doesn't feel very accessible. So we really wanted to make sure that our show could kind of reach a um, wide and resonate. We wanted to make sure that our show could reach um, and resonate with a large group of people. Right. So we know, or we all know that anytime we're talking about television or a st streaming in general, um, that when, when we turn on any form of um not, I can't figure out the word, like social media, anything where we're watching something, there has to be some form of balance between being educated and entertained. So mm -hmm. how do you approach that on your world on money? That is a great question. Um, it's actually the new German cinema directors in the 1970s went, we want to both educate and entertain with our films. Sorry, I'm a big film nerd. Um, so I love that you said that though. Uh, so yeah, I think with any film that I make, I want to educate and entertain or any content that I'm creating. Um, so it's kind of a balance of... Um, visually I think explaining the material with the visuals you're using and then also what the host me is saying mm -hmm. or what the experts are saying what clips we're using uh, I'm not in the editor's chair so they're kind of doing the brunt of the heavy work and they're doing a fantastic job at it but the way that we structure the episodes I think is also reflective of that like we always open with kind of this like scene acted out moment and then we go into like the man on the street interviews and then we dive into the topics and explaining the basics of it then we go into here's an expert let's talk with them educate me please right. uh, so I think the format kind of is this kind of entertaining but also educating moment and I think the future of all educative educative materials needs to be both entertaining and educating um, especially with younger generations you can't get away with like here's these textbook questions answer them because it just doesn't work anymore. 
So in your opinion, what do you think is are the greatest misconceptions or myths about personal finance that you find are really important to address? Biggest myths about personal finance. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if this is a myth, but more of a misconception, but I definitely felt like I just didn't need to think about retirement at all. I was just like, oh, that's in my, you know, my 60s, 70s. Like, I don't need to save up. I don't need to think about that. I need to just concentrate on me now and how I'm spending my money now. And I think that was a really big wake up call for me during the show filming that going, no, I should start saving now so that I don't have to worry when I'm older and I have that kind of money set aside. Mm -hmm. um, I think also the idea of stocks being something that isn't for everyone to kind of invest in, that it's only for like big businessmen, you know, on, on Wall Street. That was something, you know, when the word stocks, I heard that that's always what I thought of. And it didn't feel like something that was very accessible to me personally. Mm -hmm. Um, so learning more about stocks and realizing it could be something that I could go into was quite exciting. Um, I'd say those were a few, I'm sure more would come to mind. Okay. My last question, and this one was really important to me that we end with is I have friends, um, based, based on what I do for a living, I have friends throughout the world and, um, a lot of people are struggling right now. Um, there's just so much going on. Do you have a something you'd like to leave people with a little bit of advice or something positive about where we're going or, or how to get through this? Oh gosh. Yeah. I mean, the economy, I mean, I'm Canadian, so I know less about the American economy, but the Canadian economy is also, you know, equally affected. Exactly. Um, I would say, I think something that I've been trying to be much more mindful of this past year is just saving more, spending less, really asking myself, do I need this? I actually got um, a credit card for London since I moved there and I got printed custom on my credit card like Andini do you need this like mm -hmm. so I can look at it every time I buy something and go that's do amazing um because I think I need that reminder sometimes of just like am I doing a lot of impulse purchases and I'm not going to use this thing or don't really need it or is this something that I can use and I encourage people at home you know instead of going out and buying something new to replace you know the thing that broke for example try and fix it spend a couple hours try and fix something maybe innovate with what you have around you I think my background in in inventing kind of raised me to go let me take the resources around me and piece them together to make something better or to improve my situation at the moment so yeah and I always encourage saving and being creative instead well, again, I do want to thank you for your time today. I think Your World on Money is a fantastic show. I enjoyed watching your episodes and can't wait for season two. So again, thank you for your time and take care. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Thank you.